Hi, and welcome to Antique Quest. First of all, let me say I hope everyone out there is doing well in the face of this virus and that you're taking precautions and that you're all safe. So first of all, we pray for that. Uh, secondly, let me apologize for not having a video out for quite some time. Between um, being busy, cold weather, and this virus, we just haven't had a chance up until now. So for Harrison Sons Auctions, which I am the owner of, uh, what we've decided to do now with this coronavirus and the restrictions that are placed on everybody and everything around us is we've decided to put our next sale, which is our art and decorative arts auction, online. So it'll be an online only auction. So I just wanted to explain a couple things there for you. So you need to register with HiBid, which is the online platform and it's a, a worldwide thing. So. Um, it's very trustworthy. You do have to register your credit card with them because they charge you a dollar at the beginning just to make sure it's a legitimate credit card. And then you will get that back afterwards. But what happens is it allows you then to bid on the, on the items in the auction and it will be a staggered soft close. So what that means is that there's approximately 120 items up for auction. They will go up for sale on Sunday uh, I believe it's the 16th and or the 14th can't quite remember off the top of my head and then the bidding will open so you will bid then just like you would on an eBay item so it's proxy bidding that's called so if you bid a hundred dollars it'll only take what it needs to put you in the lead so if someone else has bid 20 it might go 30 but it knows you're willing to go a hundred so don't be afraid to put in a larger amount if you can't get back to the computer you know what you want to pay for an item up to this amount then you can put that amount and it'll just use it as it needs to use it so that makes it good for everyone but the staggered close means each item is going to come off roughly 60 seconds apart so um, if you wanted two items you could be bidding on this particular item and then you've got 60 seconds to go to the next lot if they happen to be side by side in the lots and it'll bring it along as the auctions ending now what happens is if anyone bids within the last five minutes on any particular item it will extend that bidding for that item only for two more minutes so you can't snipe at the last second like you can in eBay so this allows you to bid if somebody outbids you you have two minutes roughly to decide if you want to bid again and if you do then it will extend it another two minutes so each time a bid is placed within any time within the last five minutes it extends that item by two minutes so um, so sometimes when your items are staggered and it's supposed to come off here if it's had bids in the last while it will get pushed back here and these items may close which is fine because they'll bring up whichever one is closing at the time so as soon as an item has no bids within its last five minutes after the closing, which is two weeks after its opening, then the item is sold and it goes off and you're the winner. It'll show you if you've won or not and we will post the results later in the auction. So our first plan was I moved out most of my store and I've set all the things in the store here and I originally planned on having viewing days. Um, that got canceled with the COVID and then I originally thought that I could have scheduled appointments for those who might want to come and have hands on to see something. Seems that option's been taken away for us for the time being. So you'll have to rely solely on the pictures online, but I thought what I would do today is I would give you sort of a virtual tour of items that are coming up in the auction because with artwork especially, even though we put the sizes there, it makes it a lot different if you actually see the size of the artwork. So I'm going to sort of walk around the shop and just, you know, tell you a little bit about some of the items that you're going to see online. And hopefully you can get on there and bid and we can still have some fun. As far as right now, I can still ship items. So they haven't taken that option away from us. I was hoping that people could make appointments and pick up items and I would set them outside the shop and they would pick them up. At the moment, that seems a little sketchy as well. So we will gladly store anything you've won until some of these restrictions are lifted. 
So we'll just keep it here in the shop. It's locked and alarmed and everything else. And so don't worry about that. And if we can ship it to you and you want it shipped, then we'll use that option as well. So hopefully we can still keep uh, some interest. We've had a few shows canceled. I know I've had a few shows canceled already this year. We're hoping Scarecrow is still going to be valid uh, when that comes around. So hopefully this coronavirus will get out of our way and let us get back to normal life. But in the meantime, I know a lot of people are at home and they're getting kind of bored. So hopefully this auction will give you something to look at. There's some great items, really nice quality, uh, some really good artwork too. So investment sort of stuff as well. So hopefully you'll uh, enjoy this little walk around. Thanks. Okay, we'll start here in the cabinet just to show you a few things if I can. Uh, we've got that little folk art lady there. We've got these early gas light shades in opalescent glass. Uh, we have a great little uh, penny farthing high wheel bicycle metal there. Uh, down below, this is just to give you some size ideas. You're going to see better pictures of these online. We've got some small artwork, some sterling, uh, Muller Frey's art glass piece, Charles Lindbergh metal back there, and uh, teak from the ship. Uh, we've got a great face brass vase, English, later 1800s. Another sterling uh, maps in the web, sterling cup. Let's layer it down, Let's see if I can get here. There's the bisque, blue bisque jug back there. The Schaefer Invader hat pin holder. Nice little Dykeman piece there. 18th century sterling cup. Another sterling cup there. Sowerby slag glass. Uh, Lorenzen piece back there and the French enameled vase. Just hopefully gives you some size comparisons here too. Down here we have the Moorcroft vase, or a ginger jar rather. And a couple more of the glass pieces. The cups in behind, don't know if you can see those very well. And the Satsuma. And then down below we have our folk art salesman. Our life ring from 1918 and our other folk art businessman. Uh, I'm not gonna bother showing you the spoons and whatnot, or the small jewelry, because they show up much better online. So, and there's our pile in the back. Very good early Delft tile. There's our Quebec, we believe, uh, church carving. And he's just under three feet tall. Uh, he has had some damage to his fingers here. Uh, I don't know if that's focusing. But he's a great early carving. Lots of good color to him. And a good face. Probably had a staff in his hand at one time. But a good piece. Almost three feet tall. Not quite. 31, I think. Here we have our first work by Salvador Dali. It is a limited edition print signed in pencil by Dali and numbered uh, 102 of 300. So I don't know if this will help you with a. Um, let me see if I can turn this around. This will help you with a kind of a size comparison, but it's a fair size, fair size painting or print rather, lithograph. And we're just gonna walk down here to the much larger one, our other dally right here. And this one is actually a lithograph with etching and serigraphy mixed in with it. So the serigraph part is the gold highlights. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them on there. These are all hand done gold highlights. And again, pencil signed by Dally. And this particular one is number 275 of 300. But let me stand back farther, give you an idea. Might help you with size. Uh, I can't really get back far enough here. 
but that's the roof of my building. That's a door, your regular size door. So it's a, it's a good size picture. And we have some other lots down here. We have the lot of three oil lamps there, tin oil lamps. We have, this is a lot with the, uh, the dough bowl, the masher and the chopper. And there's our uh, Nova Scotia Redware milk pan. And give you an idea. It's too close. It's very hard to hold this and show you at the same time. And in behind is the mortar and pestle. So hopefully you're getting a little idea of this. Let's go along the table here. Those three albums for any of you stamp collectors from the Silver Jubilee are chock full and in excellent condition. And this, just to give you a rough idea, postcard binder is very hard to show you, but uh, there's quite a few early postcards in here. I don't know if it's focusing or what here. Oh, we dropped a bunch at once. So there's quite a lot in there, quite a lot I couldn't photograph. These are some of our early Valentine's and greeting lots, which are some really neat pieces. Um, great pierced metal charger here on a brass stand. And uh, beautifully detailed. Again, I think I'm far too close with this particular lens, so let me try and get back a bit here. Big stoneware um, platter. Nice early piece. Has had a staple repair, which some people used to collect for a while there. You can see the big staple repair, which was very pricey to do. But uh, I absolutely love this mark. It's a great great early mark and a lot of the little crocs there nice cloisonne vase some early books gone with the wind that's a first edition second printing some interesting books here especially uh, nori's navigator for any of you guys that like nautical stuff and this, I think this one was the one that caught my eye. The Committee of Secrecy. The reports of the Committee of Secrecy of the House of Commons on the papers belonging to the Society for Constitutional Information and the London Corresponding Society seized by order of the government and presented to the House by Mr. Secretary Dundas, 1794. Should make for some neat reading. The big lot of Fitz and Floyd, which is pickup only. Got some interesting books that you can see online there. Won't bore you with those. Some good art books and whatnot. Got your three pieces of uranium glass. Some interesting old candlesticks. Bleak. Some Chinese bowls. Uh, some brass candlesticks. Some blue glass, etc., etc. Now for the artwork. We have the chromolithographs, chromolithographs, I should say that better. They're quite large, as is the Inuit charcoal here. Remember, I'm just really giving you an idea of size here, folks, so you can compare a little bit. These are the McCaskills. Okay. And this is one of the originals by Sherry Warren Beers. Quite interesting collage mixed media works. We have five or six of hers in the sale. Some other interesting paintings. An interesting mixed media work by Delphine Large. And then we have the Clark Spool Box, which is Completely refinished, nice gold highlights. Um, the interior of the drawers has been gutted, but that's uh, pretty much standard for these, which makes them great for collecting. There, it's all refinished. There's been a little piece up, broken off the back there. Some more of the artwork that you see. I don't know if 
this helps much, but it will in a minute. Uh, a couple of the early frames. Now I'm going to stand back, which will give you a better view. Hopefully, we can do the wall. So there's some more originals down at the bottom. I'm just going to pan up and then we'll go in close to so give you an idea of some of the sizes you're dealing with here. Starting with that. Fabulous. Old wool work framed. And if you're wondering what that sound is, it's cluster flies in my top window. The McAvoy. And John Neville. And a very nice painting here that I just, I'm afraid I can't make out that signature. I've got a close up of it online if anybody knows, but it's, uh, I don't think that's gonna, oh, it did focus. I think I should know it, but I can't put my finger on it. Here's a very nice modern uh, mixed media work again. No signature, unfortunately. Some etchings really a matched pair same artist anyway and a little larger are these nice British school watercolors um, give you an idea and a small little 19th century typical 19th century work there and a one by Earl Pence can't really see my screen so I hope it's on there Okay, and again, Sherry Warren Beers, really interesting mixed media works for your modern collectors, modern art people that appreciate that. I do. Um, again, we got these in late, but some really nice early block prints. Uh, again, can't make the name out, but these were sold in by a very early Halifax gallery. And they're dated 62 and 67, although the 62 might be 69. Okay. Stand back and show you the other wall. Would have been great if we could have had a viewing in here. I think it would have helped a lot. So we'll give you an idea of the artwork on that wall first for size comparisons. All right, so. Might as well start right here with the John Snow. Um, just a great lithograph by John Snow. Uh, small edition, 18 out of 24. And pencil signed by him as well. It really does need to be rematted. A uh, little water damage down at the very bottom of the mat, but it is an acid mat, so you want to get that off there and have it properly framed, and that would be dynamite. Small little nude by David Chesterfield it's actually a plaster work so it's a kind of a unique thing uh, Wilcox oil by near Hubbard's and John Byrne I love this the song of the Shire like an old witch almost sewing some clothes and Marion Hamilton down here just a really nice Arizona desert painting, a listed American artist. Um, Agnes Johnson Sinclair, listed Ontario artist. Very nice scene there. Am I building a house right about there? And another, looks mostly like oil. We're calling this mixed media as well. And under glass and signed R.A. Fleming. Very nice work as well. And next to it we have another Sherry Warren Beers, which the majority of those are 20 by 20, which might help you a bit. A large Demijohn bottle. An old frame with just a new cardstock print in it. But the second one of um, this boy presenting a picture of Napoleon. So quite an early piece there. And C.D. Harris, which was a Lawrencetown, very good artist. I've had a few of his works. And then this one is actually 
Malcolm Mason. He's a very prolific British artist now working in New Zealand and that is an oil painting under glass. Very well done. Okay, stand back here again and give you an idea. That's uh, an armchair of course which will give you an idea of size of paintings and a print over there that I'll show you too. And a couple more 20 by 20s. Or actually a 12 by 16 and a 20 by 20. So again, Barry Warren Beers, Bridgetown artist. Her works there are all on canvas and on stretchers. And another hard to find listing on this fella. He needs a, a new inner mat, but the painting itself is quite good. Um, Roger Richardson. 60s from the 60s and a lithograph uh, German artist or uh, is this a serograph maybe this is the signed serograph I can't remember here top of my head I think it is the serograph 48 of 110 fishing floats yeah uh, very very well-known Russian artist um, very unique style. It's kind of in the sunlight here, so I'm not getting a great shot of it. Very unique style. Signed lithograph. I'm not going to attempt to try and say the name. Chaminsky, something along that line. And again, addition 54 out of 225. Very nicely done. And this one's great because it's the uh, Just for Laughs Festival. Montreal which you should all know and it is a limited edition by the artist and it's 232 of 250 and online you'll see all the stamps that are pressed right into the uh, paper now these I might have to actually well they're opened up online but these are in very good condition that is just a beautiful pattern quilt and these are all registered with the Nova Scotia Heritage Quilt Project and this one's fabulous because the more I look at it it seems like the more little houses I find uh, you can see here a little door and the roof window um, but they're all through it Let me just open this up somewhat so you can see Give you an idea and there's little houses in each corner Just a, again, just a fabulous, very detailed pattern. Look at all those pieces of material that have gone into this one. So, really great quilts. We're very excited about these. Um, and, sorry if the camera's going all over the place. I'm trying to do one thing and look at another. And this one, which I'm assuming that star might have been reworked because some of the ones inside show a lot of wear to those center stars. Um, condition is not quite as good on this one, but it is still a very nice early quilt. Lots of quilting in there. And same house and registered again with the Nova Scotia Hook Drug Society is this fantastic Colorful, beautiful color runner. Now all of these are fresh to the market, came out of a house. It was the ladies who consigned these. It was her mother's items and they resided in a trunk this whole time, properly cared for. And the colors are just fantastic because of it. It's got a nice thick pile. I don't even know if you can see that, but each piece is sort of raised up very little markings of anything on there you know for the most part it's just exceptional and beautiful color and quite a large runner the size is online again and here's an interesting piece a country high boy and the reason this lady called us is I was called in to see this piece and give her my opinion on it um, quite a long time ago actually but it's a country version of a 
period high boy. Unfortunately, I'm sure it had ball and claw feet at one time. And somebody has cut them off. Now it might not have actually had the ball and claw finished. It might have just been a turned foot, but somebody at one point has cut it down to fit somewhere, which is unfortunate. And you'll notice things like here, where on your fine Boston ones, this would be a shell with the fan going around there, but they've, they've still done it, which is really neat, really interesting. Um, you know, a country craftsman put this together and it is two piece. Um, the hardware is old, but not original, according to the holes in the back. So just so you know. But you know, it's, it's a lot cruder than your, your fine, fine ones would be, but it's really got a beautiful look. Still has a nice form. Now, whether anybody wants to restore the feet to something like that and put it up to its proper height, it's entirely up to you. But if you're looking for a good country version of a high boy, um, you know, we don't see these. They never show up, so not here anyway. Interesting cutouts on the base and massive big backboards. So the top half has two horizontal backboards, all chamfered tool marks. Nice early nails there that it won't focus on for me, I bet. No, it won't. And uh, looks like something chewed its way in through there when it was tighter. But it's all pinned construction. So really neat piece. That's up for sale in the auction as well. Um, but that gives you a rough idea of most of the things that are going to be in this auction. There is a lot of artwork. Um, oh yeah, and I have some one other thing I've got to show you because this is just fantastic. And that is the Ship's Strong Box. And this is just an amazing, amazing piece um, because it has its key. So, oh, and it is solid. The key's down there in the bottom. You can't see it with my arm, there it is. But you know what's nice about this one? I've had a bigger one before, but it had a broken top. You never get the key. But this one is a manageable size. Um, not without a bit of grunting though, let me tell you, because they are heavy. But it's got great handles and it's got these great embossed lines all around. Um, even on the back, so I'm gonna walk around and show you the back. Probably has some better lighting back here. Now look at these great embossed lions in these shields. I mean, to find one in this kind of shape is just great. So that's in the sale. I'm very excited about it. And I think lastly, I'm gonna move a couple chairs here. I'm gonna show you this artwork by an Israeli artist. Orna Ben Shoshan, very well-known Israeli artist. Now this is called, I think, the Prolific Explanation or something along that line. I wasn't 100% sure on that, so I didn't put it in the ad. And your first instinct is gonna be it's a print. It's not a print. It's an original piece. It's all Painted and what's really neat is this is all painted paper, so it's a mixed media. She's painted it and then she's applied it, glued it to the surface here, so it gives it somewhat of a three dimensional look. So these orange peels, they're all applied on afterwards. The hands, I mean, it's just really neat. Now there's three books at least I think that I know of published about this artist's work. So very well, well known, well listed artist, good investment piece. You know, uh, there's that with the Russian one and, and some of the dallies and of course that large Inuit, that's a charcoal too. It's not a print. So just so you know, this is, looks like charcoal and ink. So that is an actual drawing by Rogi. 
Um, so I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. I know it's, uh, you know, the camera movement sometimes might make you feel a little sick, so I'm trying to go a little slower. Um, but it does give you, hopefully, a little better idea. And that chair, of course, is in the auction as well. Just a typical armchair, but very solid, very good piece of furniture if you need one. So just to give you an idea, and like I say, we can hang on to all of it for you. So, oh, and there's another one. I keep forgetting one, so I had to kind of fit them wherever I didn't have something of my own. And this is a Haitian work. Uh, I don't know a lot about this artist, but you can find works by them. They have, Sotheby's has actually sold works by this particular artist, um, R. Dorleans. And the typical blue-green landscape is their signature with very colorful figures. Very neat. Haitian. I uh, don't know, did I just say Jamaican? I meant Haitian artist who has been sold by some of the top galleries and drew O in France as well. Okay. So I hope that helps. Uh, gives you a little something to compare with, but but please do go online. You can go to our website, www.harrisandsonsauctions.com, and I'll provide a link there to the online platform. And I will be mailing it out to any of you that are on our mailers, and um, hopefully you'll get over there. You can go look at the catalog now. Bidding won't open until Sunday, so I don't know when this video will get out, maybe before that. But once it's open, all you have to do is register. And once you register once with high bid, you're good. That means you can bid on any high bid auction anywhere. They save you. So um, you won't have to ever do it twice. So once you do it once, you're done. Okay. Thanks for watching, folks. Sorry we haven't got anything out sooner. Um, hopefully, if we get stuck here for a while, I'll try and come up with some other videos for you. And we sure appreciate you watching. So um, please like, share, and Try and uh, send some friends that you might think might be interested in some of the things we have in the auction. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless. Spend some time with your family. And you know, it's a great time to read the Bible if you haven't read it already. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless. And have a great day. Take care of yourselves, too. Bye-bye. <music>